Well, folks, we're here at uh, Mulgrave. This is one of our old films. Very enjoyable film as well. All that didn't shoot very well on uh, on this particular day. Plenty of game shots out there, just have an off day. But it was still great to be out there amongst like-minded people, passionate people. Ian Botham and his family. Ian's on this, this day in particular and speaks out about the trials and tribulations that, uh, that shooting goes through, the attacks, many attacks that we get. And it's not just the big shoots, they turn up any, everywhere, these people today. They just don't want anybody to enjoy the countryside anymore. Hopefully, the government will listen to the shooting world and the countryside itself and all the, the people that get a living out of the countryside. We have some of the most marvellous sceneries in the world and some of the most marvellous pastimes in the world that people come from all over the world to come and enjoy. Good morning, we're at Mulgrave today, beautiful little estate, uh, at the first drive at Footman's Leap, uh, fantastic drive. And some of these birds were definitely off the scale up here, I've struggled to, uh, to shoot some up here, fantastic birds, very difficult. Uh, we've got a strong team here today as well, um, shooting at the side of me, he has shot some nice birds, it's uh, Ian Bowden. Uh, his son Liam's next door but one to me, he shot some nice birds as well. But in general, I think everybody uh, sort of got some nice birds but uh, struggle a little bit. They haven't got a lot, they, they a lot of space to shoot them in. You get one barrel off and you're struggling to get the second barrel off, but that's probably the speed of the bird rather than the speed of the gun. But um, yeah, I can say quite honestly. These are some of the best birds I've shot at. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit wet, it's not too bad, it's sh very shortable uh, in this weather. It's, it's a little bit of breeze up there to, to get a nice curl on the pheasants. Cloudy, it's probably ideal for, for shooting. As we've just seen, some of these birds were stratos stratospheric. Some of the hardest birds that I've shot at. That's probably due to the height of the, the terrain and the, the weather conditions today is probably the ideal day for shooting. Start a drive called Cow Patches at uh, Mulgrave. Totally different terrain to what we've just shot. Um, there'll be some good birds in here, but it's not the sheer cliffs that we've just shot at on the first drive at Footman's. Um, 
see how it goes. Uh, have a bit of commentary in, uh, in a few minutes, see if we can shoot any better. I need a few low birds now, Jonathan. <laughs> which is an ACC. So. Right, I didn't deal sir in Bourbon. Is it first day at Moldravian? It is actually, Dave, I enjoyed it. It's been brilliant so far. Well, what actually, did you think to the first round? <laughs> extreme. Yeah. But yeah. Um, Very difficult for both of us. Yeah, and, but it's good fun. It, it gets the old uh, ticket pumping yeah. a bit. Yeah. Uh, great to see the, the birds in such great condition and flying well. Flying well. Out of range. Uh, where, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Such a fantastic birds. Uh, we've just been discussing early on, uh, before you turn the camera on, uh, Jonathan, about uh, the ups and downs of the uh, the game shooting world. And the the views that the outside world has on the, you know, the shooting fraternity. And as, as Ian uh, has pointed out, that, the shooting fraternity does a, a hell of a lot, you know, for the uh, the conservation of, the, of animals and, and birds in general. 
Well, you I don't have to you walk around here, Dave, because we've just driven through yeah. it. But you look at the paths here in the yeah. woods. If it wasn't for the paths, people wouldn't be able to walk. Who yeah. maintains the paths? Exactly. The people that work here. Yeah. Yeah. Why is the grass cut? Why is it so places you can sit and have a barbecue? Uh, the rivers are in good nick. Yeah. You know, this doesn't just happen. It just doesn't happen that the fish wander in here. They come here because it's clean, it's in the right environment, and it's the same with all, all wild animals. You know, hen harriers, which is a popular uh, weapon used by uh, particularly the RSPB, and they say that hen harriers, uh, we, we actually, the shooters and fishers, uh, we're against hen harriers. I wish they'd just get their facts right for once. And go out and see how many there is. Well, you know, there was 18 is, reared. Yeah, all protected on, by the gamekeepers. On yeah. grouse moors. Do you know how many there were at Bowen and other places that the RSPB looked after? One. So I suggest that maybe we're getting it right and they're not. There's no interest in us fighting each other. What should really happen is that we work together. Yeah. We understand the countryside. A lot of these people probably don't. Uh, I'm not saying all. Yeah, we've got we've got to start fetching them in well, from outside the shooting world. I mean, we've got our governing bodies, the BASC, um, the Game Conservancy, but they are preaching to the converted already. You know, we should be. They should be. If you go to the game fairs, they they're, they're picking uh, young, uh, you know, the youngsters up. The, the, the youngsters, it's already attached to shooting families. You know, to rural families. For me, they sh we should be going further out there, over the wall, and getting, well, gathering people up that doesn't, um, that don't understand shooting, and the conservation that goes behind it. Well, we went it's through. It's easy to vilify. The, of the course, it is. See, it's easy. Really. Yeah, it's There's easy one prosecution. The one prosecution for thousand gamekeepers. Yeah. Now, I reckon that's a pretty good record. And I doubt if there's many other professions yeah. anywhere in the world yeah. that can match that. Yeah. So uh, I, I really need to start getting your facts right. And the best way to do that is to stop being ignorant, stop the ignorance. But let's let's put our hats on. Yeah. How can we make it better? Yeah. The, the countryside's there for everybody to enjoy. Yeah. We don't object from people coming out in the cities here, and people don't object to us going for the day into the cities. That's how it should be. But please don't come out from the cities and tell us how to run the countryside. That is the most frustrating part, and it's something that um, it's just down to ignorance. Don't believe everything you're yeah. told about what goes on out here. What goes on out here? Went through Helmsley last night, yeah. lovely village. Yeah. You go through Helmsley, shooting, fishing, hunting, yeah. it's all stopped tomorrow. Yeah. What are you gonna do with all those thousands of people that rely on that train and that's in one area? Yeah. You know, there's well, millions right. of people yeah. employed in it. No, if they do all stop hunting, <laughs> fishing, shooting. So what are we going to do what instead? Are we, what, what, well, what are we going to do to employ these people? Who's going to foot the bill to find these people work or pay them to be on benefits? You know. You're also, you're not going to see, you're not going to see pheasants, you're not going to see partridge, you're not going to see grouse. They're not looked after, they're not going to just sit around trees and wait for the cagoules to come along and throw them a bit of bread, but it doesn't work that way. But you won't see the wildlife that attaches no. itself to the game, to the, to the well, actual uh, the game scene itself. The woodpeckers, finches that rely on the feed in the winter. Yeah. You know, I mean, even the lowly pigeon. Who forgot the birds? Exactly. Yeah. Ah, we know exactly. who forgot the birds, yeah. the RSPB.
John dead as well. Uh, I'd like to introduce Mrs. Liam Bolden, who was very, very new to shooting. Very and, new. Uh, and she'd been dropped in the deep end, especially on the uh, Putman's Leap, a high struggle there. Uh, very, very difficult there. Uh, but she's persevering, and I think she's enjoying the day, watching the dog work. As you can see, the dog's been very busy, and uh, the, the dog seems to be trained very well. Thank you, Kate. Yeah. I usually am flying behind Liam and appreciating how well he's yeah. shooting and, and, the, and the other guns. So to be in the mix of I'm shooting with you guys on, the, on this kind of line is phenomenal. It's, it's nice to see you know ladies involved with shooting. We try to get more and more involved, and I'm sure Lisa's really took it to heart, and I'm sure she's going to become a, a real ambassador for for lady shooting. Yeah, I'd like to see. I mean, where else do you get to see? Countryside like, like this and looked home. after properly by yeah. you know, the keepers and, and the staff here. And Wherever you go in Yorkshire, it's a brilliant shooting. This last drive, the beach drive, also known as the point, it was my chance to try some steel shot. Which, as you all know, steel will be with us in the next two or three years. And uh, I've got, still got mixed feelings about it, and uh, I did have there. I did kill some nice birds, but I did feel that I could have shot better Suffice to say, I did enjoy the drive, and I did. I still did kill some nice birds with steel shot. Hopefully, as it as we progress onto steel, it it will get better and better. The cartridge companies, as far as I know. Uh, working full out, it's full steam ahead till, uh, you know, they get the best out of steel they can. Again.
We just finished our last drive, what I call the beach drive, um, also known as the point at Mulgrave and it's well as you can see it's absolutely stunning. The birds are stunning, the scenery is stunning and where do you get to shoot at stuff like this only here, it's unique and you can see the backdrop, the old landing point of Bram Stoker's Dracula, what, uh, what more do you need? <laughs> Thanks to these uh, these lads that we've had a good day as well because these they put a lot of hours in here. They've got the, they've got the dogs to feed. They've got the wives to feed as well, haven't you? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Who's the youngest? Here? <laughs> Tony Younger. Tony. 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 How old are you, Tony? Fifty-two. Fifty-two. Who's the oldest? Sixty-six. It's a young team, no, really. We're only, <laughs> we're only <laughs> men, aren't we? You've got to draw a land rig and they're walking sideways on them mountains, they're 88 <laughs> years old. Yeah, anyway, well done, lads, and thanks very much. Thanks very much. Thank you. Lovely. Yeah. Very much. Close, right?